Are you looking for that unicorn of a vertical antenna that covers the entire bands of 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6 meters without needing a tuner and without spending a king's ransom? Stick around and we'll look at the good and the bad of the DX Commander and see if it lives up to the hype. Thanks for joining me in the House of Ham. I'm Bob, WV7W, and today we're going to dive into one of the most sought-after antennas on the market. And as with all my antennas, I bought this with my own money, and I'm not affiliated with DX Commander in any way. This antenna has been covered pretty well, so why did I decide to do yet another video on it? I wanted to give my perspective and go over a few things I haven't seen in any of the other videos I've watched, and I might even be able to share a tip or two. Even though I'm including this in my antenna addiction series, I don't view this one as an addiction problem. It's more of a necessity, especially for those like me that don't have a lot of real estate to plant a large antenna farm. I'm also going to show you how I mounted this in a semi-permanent installation so that I can take it down quickly and easily, as there can get some pretty high winds in this area. Calum of DX Commander has provided several versions of this antenna, but I bought the Classic as it covered all the bands I wanted and had room to guy in my small yard. So I opted for the Classic over to the Signature 12.4 or the Nebula. Those with a little more space might consider one of the taller versions. Or if you're looking for a more portable solution, you might opt for the Expedition. Not that the Classic isn't regularly used for portable operations. The DX Commander is actually a very simple but genius design. It is essentially a vertical fan dipole. The elements are nothing more than wire that run from the bottom aluminum plate up through these really high quality nylon guide plates. The build is pretty easy to do and if you follow the instructions that Callum provides you should have no issues. The only trouble I had was with the bottom two sections collapsing on me. More on that later. I tried to outsmart the directions a bit when it came time to cutting the wire. Since I'm predominantly a CW and digital operator, I figured I would cut them a bit longer so my SWR dip would be a bit lower in the 40, 20, and 10 meter bands. Turns out, you're much better off to just go with the measurements that Callum provides. Now you may have noticed that I tagged each element. I highly recommend marking your elements somehow. You'll thank me when it comes time to making adjustments. It's much easier to find which one is which. I found myself having to trace from the plate up to the top of each element to make sure I was adjusting the right one. When it comes to trimming this thing, you can use the SWR calculator that is on the DX Commander website. I have also linked it in the description. If you do it this way, there's something you need to keep in mind, and this goes against everything that I've ever learned about tuning wire antennas. And that is, when you fold an insulated wire back on itself, it doesn't shorten by as much as you would think. Callum did a video on this and I've linked it in the description. He does a great job of explaining this. In a nutshell, it only shortens by about a third of the amount you shorten by. I found this to be the case in my trimming experience. Before seeing his video, I found myself having to go back and forth several times to get it dialed in. So why would you want to fold more back than trimming off actual wire? Well, it's much easier to undo a change if you go too far with folding vice cutting. When it came to the radial wires, I did set them up just as described in the instructions with Callum's preferred, which is 21 10 and a half foot radials, with three radials going to each of the four connectors. What I ended up doing is getting some one and a quarter inch PVC pipe, a coupler, an end plug, and buried all but the coupler and the several inch piece above the coupler that the bottom of the antenna goes over. To keep the radial plate in place, I cut this ring out of a scrap of vinyl laminate flooring and used some liquid nails to glue the plate to the ring. The ring then sits on the pipe resting on the coupler. This makes raising or lowering the antenna a very quick evolution. Only having one wire to connect or disconnect makes setting this up and taking it down a breeze. Just don't forget to connect it or your SWR will be way out of whack. Don't ask me how I know that. To make the guying very quick, I use these clips with cam grips, so adjusting the tension is really fast. I got these at Home Depot for less than $10 for four of them. 
After I get them where I want them, I throw a couple half hitches to make sure they don't slip. So let's talk about the bandwidth of this thing. The 40 meter band um, is below 1.4 to 1 and gets down to as low as 1.04 to 1. The 30 meter band is below 1.24 to 1 as low as 1.2 to 1. 20 meter band is below 2 to 1 um, and as low as 1.15 to 1. The 17 meter band is below 1.17 to 1 as low as 1.01 to 1. A 15 meter band is 1.68 to 1 at the highest, 1.01 to 1 at the lowest, but it's pretty high up the band. You can't adjust it separately from the 40 meter band because it uses the 40 meter element. 12 meter bands below 1.2 to 1 across the entire band as low as 1.09. 10 meters is kind of an odd one. Um, at the very start of it, it's 1.55 to 1, gets down to 1.02 to 1. But then um, up at 29.18, it gets up as high as 3.14 to 1, so you would need a tuner for it. And then as it gets to the very top, it starts coming back down again to 2.57 to 1. 6 meters is another one. Uh, starts at 2.54 to 1, gets down as low as 1.28 to 1 at 51.8 megahertz, uh, then goes back up to 2.58 uh, uh, to 1 at 52.760, and then towards the high end it drops back down again. So you probably would want a tuner on this one as well. So let's talk about what I like and what I don't. I like the simplicity of this antenna and I really like how it covers the entire band without a tuner for all except 10 and 6 meters. I also really like the on-air performance of this thing. I get much better reach than I can get with my cobweb, which covers the same bands except the cobweb doesn't cover the entire band like this one does. And there are several bands I can't even use with the internal tuner on my 7300. So the things that I don't like, I had a problem with the bottom two sections collapsing on me using the wire ties that are supplied. It may have been something I was doing wrong, but I ended up going with the tubing covered hose clamps like the way it originally shipped. This seems to have completely solved the problem. I did keep the electrical tape and the wire ties for the sections further up. The other thing is that I will have to take this down when the wind really kicks up here. And we can get some pretty strong winds here, sometimes over 50 miles an hour. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to take down, and I plan on dropping it whenever the winds are forecasted to get over 30 miles an hour. So neither of these things are huge problems and certainly not showstoppers. So the bottom line is this is an outstanding antenna, and it is no wonder that it is as popular as it is. I can't recommend it enough. The price versus performance is off the chart compared to several verticals that are several times more expensive. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73s.